Hello, still December the 17th. I thought I'd just start on problem 23. A, uh, part A seems to be very easy as if it's only meant to uh, derive this equation because by the proof in the theory section we already have a formula for in R uh, when P is equivalent to 3 modulo 4 so it's just a question of finding out what happens if R is odd no <laughs> if R is even this result follows immediately but it was actually used um, this was known before so we introduce S being the half of R assuming R is even So we square it, and this guy gives the same, of course. Let's see what we need to show. Oh, yeah. Uh, R, that's 2S. So this is P to S minus 1 squared. And was that what we had to show? Oops, there's some <laughs> uh, this minus to the s. Um, so we have to take that out. That was wrong. I was not sufficiently careful there. And then uh, let's start with the result. That's more easy, really. P to S minus minus one to S squared, getting P to two S minus two minus in S to P S to plus 1 that's it so that solves A the next one I've forgotten this if n is odd, it depends only upon the quadratic. I've totally forgotten that, the, that we have worked with this in problem 8. Ah, so that's the number of points in n r, whether uh, depending on, on n. Yeah, 
I think that was about what I wanted to do today. The next thing I'll do is to drink my coffee, which I've already poured, and then I'll write up these formulas from problem eight, and then maybe I'll go on, maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. Good morning. Monday, December the 19th. I just started on problem B. I have found the uh, Mabel procedure I made during section one. I think we might need that to be able to find where I've made my mistakes. Well, so we have P is equivalent to one, and that means that we have to find, to write P as a product of to uh, Gaussian integers and as in the uh, in the theory section we take R art and S even, because then it's possible to choose one so that, and we take an arbitrary one using the S, uh, using the plus, uh, and I don't care whether S is positive or negative, of course. So assume R plus IS is equivalent to plus one. Then minus R plus IS is equivalent to minus one. And that means that we can write up the formulas for NR res and NR non res. So in this case, when n is a residue, we must use this one. And when it's a non res, it's the other guy. And then we have to compute N. Up, it's up here, N2R. Oh, and this Q is, of course, uh, Q squared now. So we use the same Q as up here. And we need to prove that this is a multiple of the least common multiple of these two guys. I feel like multiplying these two and then see what comes out.
that requires a new page of course so I'll make a break and put it over on a new page here we are there's no need to write any superscript here because all the ends are residues have residue equal to unity so it's a quadratic residue all the integers so my idea was to make a product of those two First we take them uh, vertically, coupled, and of course we have that P equals R squared plus S squared. That means the product of these two is uh, minus r squared and then this squared, that's minus s squared, so it's minus p. Oh, that is... Uh, minus r to the qth. Well, let's do that later on. And this one squared, it's the same. Minus p to the rth. Well, let's take the product of these. It looks like the same, doesn't it? This one times this one, that's the opposite one. So doesn't that give a minus to the rth? Oops. And the other one, uh, that was minus P, and this is. Uh, it's minus to the rth and then uh, oops oh yeah one could do that but it's minus r plus is to two rth. So that's those two. Then we need this one times this one. And it looks very much like this one times this one. Ah. this one times this one and this one times this one then we have opposite signs oh, let's take it slowly but did I forget it number two up here it seems so
So this one times this one. And then times. So this one adding with this one. We already had that. So it's minus to the earth. Do it minus r plus i s. So this is the guy. Uh, it's the same, really. That's strange. This guy times this plus this time times this. That's weird, really. So it's to the first. Then it just vanishes, so we can use either of them. Of course, we can use either of them. Never mind. To the earth. I don't even know if the idea is good. Because this is obvious much great much larger than the least multiple of the two individually. Of course, we could split up in two cases, R being odd, where all this vanishes, and then this give minus. Let's try to do that. This is kind of 2q in modern mathematics. Oh, or am I wrong here? I think it's this guy square. Yes. <clears throat> and when I is odd, the second line vanishes, so it's minus p 
to r minus 2p to r, that's minus 2q. And when this is r, it's minus Oh, it's still art. This guy cancel. Well, oh, this is strange. Why couldn't it just give plus one? Well, let's take the other case, R even. That was the first line, and then the second one. This gives two, meaning we have four out here. And this, we just have to write that. But then we have to distinguish the two cases here as well. Meaning we get rid of the minus one. So we should go back and distinguish the two cases up here already. <clears throat> In case R is even, this guy equals this guy, and this one equals this one. That means the two are equal, and we already knew that. So I was being rather silly there. So if they are, if R is even, we just need to check that that this guy divides this guy. And if I was odd, there are more, more to be done. So we must reduce these two according to whether R is even or odd. <clears throat> I'll just prepare that on a new page, and then we can just forget about all this. Here we are. 
first we take R even. Yeah, never mind. It's, it's the same. So, how could this possibly be a factor of this? Well, how could this be a factor of that? Isn't that a little weird? I thought it should be minuses here. I'll just check that. It should be minuses, minus here. That changes stuff somewhat. Yeah, I checked it. It was, of course, a minus. And that gives me the idea to... Oh, I don't know what. So multiply with q plus 1 plus the two roots. Let's try that. Oh, it's uh, the sum <coughs> times the difference, so it's just minus this squared. And of course, alpha times alpha bar equals P. And that's Q, and that's just equal to N2R. All right, <clears throat> now let's start with R odd. This is minus to the rth of the same as times the same as this one, <clears throat> and minus to the rth is a minus, so it gives plus. And now that product, that parenthesis is not needed, of course.
So it's minus the product of the second term. And then p to the rth again. That's also minus that guy. I'll just correct it this way. So this gives p to rth gives q, so that cancels the double product. And that should be a minus as well. Oh my god. And this is just n2r. All right, so this is another case of being too complicated. We need not split Q into its, uh, or did we? No, we could just write alpha. So all we needed was the observation I made here that, uh, where did I make it? That, yeah, that we could choose alpha and minus alpha. And then we could have done it with alphas all the way around, and then the algebra would be easy to solve. The only idea is that you need to break up in the two cases, R being even and R being odd. So that was B. Now going to C. We need a table. And in each case, determine the type of abelian group. Right. Uh, now, I don't know why I feel ready. Don't feel ready to start right away. It doesn't really, of course, the the powers here become irritatingly large. But on the other hand, let's try and do it. So we need one plus two i. And, <coughs> or rather, this is equivalent to to minus one. This is equal to minus one plus two plus two i. So it's equivalent to minus one. And the one equivalent. Uh, Oh, that's fine, really, isn't it? Now, what should we compute? For R, one, two, three. So this is the non-residue. I don't think there is a nice expression by expanding this, so it's a little annoying. Let's take r equals 1. That 
equals 3. And when i equals 2, they are all. So it should be for i equals 3, I think. Now let's take the residues, the, the, where, the ones where 1 is residue, or where n has this quadratic residue. That gives 7. This is annoying doing on the tablet, and we have to square them. So I'll just use Mabel for that. But first we'll check Mabel whether this is right, if this is right or wrong. As you can see, I checked it with P equals P equals 3. <clears throat> so N first and then 5. This is a residue. Oh, that's a little too high, perhaps. That was a little too high. We don't need to go so high. There we are. So when it's a residue, For the other one, we can use two, I think. Yes, it's plus minus one that are the quadratic residues. So that gave four. That was not what I got. Oops, that was the wrong guy. I got three, five. Uh, that's a little strange. I wonder where my plus one went. It's plus one, plus one, plus one. So it's four and eight. And is that what I got here? Four and eight. All right. And of course, when I was even, there is no distinction. They are all residues, rather. So now I'll make the table, and I'll do it in both ways, both using the, uh, the formula and <clears throat> by counting. Or rather, these larger numbers, we can't do it by counting, of course. So, I mean, 5 to 14, that, that would take a while. So we'll just use the formula now that I've, when I've established that I've got the right formula. That will, I'll do that during a break and then show the result to you, and then we can look at the types of each group. So it did take a while. First on Mabel you have the results down here, and then I've copied it to this whiteboard, 
Oh, you can't see that. I think I shall ah. I'll stay down here until we need it. Now, problem 199 that it refers to is when q is equivalent to minus 1, not 0, 4. So I think that's irrelevant. But problem 11, it says about the L type, if L, well, this is a prime, if L is equivalent to minus 1 modulo 4, then the, uh, the number of solutions are, oh, uh, that's a little complicated, but uh, the type is L alpha, point L alpha, and in case L is 2, it's either L alpha point, point L alpha or L alpha point L to the alpha minus 1. So that should make it make it able to determine a lot of the types here. 2.2, of course the Vienna group we have of point of order 2. So there should be a point of order 2 times 29 times 673. I believe we need this for a few for reference in the future. It's called future reference. I was just about saying that and I became uncertain. That's ugly. Now here's a problem, and here's a problem. You see, 13 is equivalent to 1 modulo 4, as it is 29. So that's a question. Did we have to go all the way up to 14? We did indeed. So how do we decide what to do there? I have no idea. So I'll think a little about that and then regarding a question D, I will make the table and uh, and not spend much time recording, so I'll just present the results, as I've come to believe that this is all for future reference. Hello, morning, December the 20th, or rather it's half past 11, so we are approaching lunch. I got an idea, and the uh, it was this number fives that we had, that made me think the, part, the squares of P that we could look at the map. So given a point on the curve, x point y, oh, 
uh, we map it to minus x square root minus 1 y. In these fields, we have a square root minus 1, so we just choose one. And I believe it's an automorphism of the uh, group of points. I believe we have proved that. And particularly when we have five points of order, f if we have a point of order 5, rather, p, then we have 2p, 3p, 4p, and 5p is the point at infinity. So if this is x plus y, then this is the inverse. And we already have a formula for 2p, which we derived in section, section 7 of chapter 1. And I've got the formula somewhere right. And some y value, I don't know. And then 3p, uh, it's actually uh, 4p times 2. So that means it has the same x value. And I wondered if this point could be any of these four. If it isn't, then we have another point, namely this one, or rather this one, of order 5, and that means that the type must be 5.5. That was my idea. All right, so let's check if this can give x as well. But do we need to check that? There are only two points with the same x values. Oh, but they could be opposite. So the question is, is it possible that they are opposite? squared and y squared equals x to the third minus n squared x and that gives 4x to the fourth And uh, minus 4 in squared x squared plus n to the fourth vanishes. All right, if p equals 5, then this term, this term vanishes. So let's take that as one case. Then we isolate x and it's n squared divided by 2. n square is uh, 1 divided by 2, that's 3 of course, so it's 3n squared. That means 3 is a square, but 3, 5 equals minus 1, so that means it's possible if r is even. All right.
right. That's a little special possibility, but who knows. Well, and in our case where p is 13, we check the discriminant. then to the fourth minus 20, n to the fourth equals minus 60, n to the fourth, and that is a square, because uh, we are in fields where minus one is a square. So it's possible. And there are four solutions. Uh, I hoped that this was impossible because then uh, this guy couldn't be equal to this one or or the other one. Do you think there's any future in pursuing this? X equals... Well, let's try. I don't think it'll lead to anything, but... Um, so, we use the same square root minus 1 as above, and that means x squared. equals minus 2n squared plus minus square root minus 1, 4n squared divided by 2 the plus oh uh, the minus 1 so yeah it doesn't really lead to anything I think well let's write it uh, 4 square root minus 1 minus 2 no minus 1 uh, 2, my God, 2 square root minus 1 minus 1 n squared and the minus so then we are down to this whether well, these guys turn out to be. Of course, the uh, square root minus 1 lies in the base field Zp, Z13. So this lies there as well. And if I is even, it is uh, a, a square root. Otherwise, it may or may not be. So we don't even solve this guy, where it's odd. And this guy's here, it's even. So that idea didn't work. Just when I was starting the recording, I realized that the guys we had here were 13 squared and 29 squared. meaning that uh, thinking only of prime 5 didn't cut it at all. All right, that was what I had for you for now. It didn't work. Hello, December 21st. 
I have thought a little about the problem. I thought first that uh, do the job here when P is 13. Then we can choose the square root of minus 1 to be equal to 5. 5 squared is 25. It's 1 below 26. So let's choose 5. That's 9. Which is a square. So this equals 3n squared. And in the other case it's uh, minus 10 n squared I believe now let's see yeah and uh, I believe that's a square as well minus 10 that's like 3 n squared I'll just check it on Maple, which is not on. Yes, 3 is a square. 1, 2, 3, 4 squared. So this is 4n squared. So it was perfectly possible. On the other hand, I noticed something differently. You see we get 13 squared here, but in the field F5 to 12, there's a, a tower, F5 to 6, F5 to 4th, F5 to 3rd, F5, 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 F2, and of course extensions uh, all the way up. No, not that. There's an F. Goes this way. F4, I think we have an, and F6 and 12. I think we have another device, do we not? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. No, that, that's, that, that's it. Oh, here, 6 is an extension of 2. There we go. So where do we have uh, 13? We have that in F6. So already here we have 13 and down here we get another one. And the same with 14. It's an extension of F2 and F5 to five squared and F5 to the seventh. And here we have 29. And then in a quadratic extension we get 29 squared. And that means that we actually have only consider, need only consider quadratic extensions. And then we get another guy. Let's see up here how that works. Here we get 5 squared. That's already in 4. And in 2. So uh, the same uh, 
the same number of points we have in uh, f13 squared will lie in f13 to the eighth. So that's the same type, and we don't know. But and the type comes here from a quadratic extension. Uh, oh, already in f13 we have five. So they're the same in the squared, and then to the fourth we get some new, and to the fifth we get a new sequence. So this is of course not a quadratic extension, it's extension with a fifth order polynomial of degree six. That's what I have for you today, it's just a question of uh, having solutions of a certain order and then new one comes in an algebraic extension and particularly the quadratic extension we can't use that here of course but in the other cases a quadratic extension is all we need I've thought a little more about the structure we have we are in some that need to be black I think In some base field FQ and then we have the group EN over FQ and in that we have a subgroup of the elements of order 5 called order L and in that we have uh, we have the base field P is equivalent to 1 modulo 4. So we can choose some element U to be square root minus 1. And that is in G we have this automorphism. Then we have fq squared. There's an embedding there. And the group of elements of order L or L squared. So we assume there are new elements of order L or L squared, L being a prime. And here we have the same automorphism. We also have the um, Galois some automorphism here that are constant on FQ. But that might just be uh, part of this because this guy has order 4 and psi um, psi phi squared equals maps to x point minus y, so that might be the uh, automorphism uh, from this Galois extension. I think we have to do with this one alone. Now the idea I got this morning was, actually while I was still lying in bed, was that uh, this Uh, now, what is the order of that map? It's order 4. So, psi to the second is P maps to minus P. So, phi to the fourth is the identity. My idea was that we get uh, 
them divided into groups of four, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I just need to make a break, sorry. All right, the point I was about to make was that if we have some point, then uh, in G or H, then this for i equals naught to 3 are four points of the same order. So they are grouped into points, four distinct points. So if we go up here, we have four points. Every time we have one, we have four. And these groups are distinct. That's obvious to me, but is it necessary to make a proof? No, that's obvious. It is necessary to prove it, but it's very easy. And that means that L must be of the form 1 modulo 4. So is it possible that we make some extension and then get of the order L squared? Well, then there still are some of order L that are connected by being conjugates under this automorphism. <clears throat> no, uh, where is the automorphism? Oh, here it is. And um, then uh, L squared minus L that's the same with the rest, so they are all combined by this automorphisms in groups of four, and then we have the unity. And you see, I, that's the thing I noticed, that we didn't have factor three. The first one was five, so they are all, all the, the uh, factorizations here, that's 1 modulo 4, except 2, of course, 13, and etc. So now we know why. Because by this automorphism, they are all grouped in groups of 4, being associates. I think the next step is to assume. that we have a point in H of exact order 25 or L squared. And then see if I can come anywhere from there. But there was just the thing I thought about this morning, and it seems to hold. And I think a little about this, and then if I get any ideas, I'll make a new recording today. Well, it's now the afternoon. I tried to make an example here, and it turned out to be totally feasible all the way through. So, what we need to do is to work with the Galois group skip this and let phi be the generator, uh, generator of the Galois group and still we assume that the point P has exact order L squared let's look at phi of P that should be a capital P, by the way. It also has order L squared, exact order L squared. And that means it's a power of P. And we haven't used I yet. I, P.
and then then apply that it's uh, that lies in the Galois group, and that means that here g squared should we try to generalize it? Nah, leave that for the moment. That means that. What am I doing here? What on earth am I doing here? It's, uh, that's of course, uh, I, I, uh, two I P. So what am I doing here? Or oh, is it I squared? It's rather I squared. If P has exact order L, then LP is unchanged by phi. On the other hand, this equals L phi of P, which equals I of P, that means that, oh, and phi of P Now this is ridiculous. It's L phi of P because um, phi of L. Ah, here's the mistake. Oops, I'll erase it. So phi reduces to the identity on FQ. Therefore, the points in EN of FQ are unchanged by phi. This is L times phi of P, which is LI times P. And that means that L times i minus 1 p is infinity. Now what was L? That was the order here. So let's assume now this has order L squared and I may we choose this um, It cannot, uh, it 
cannot have a factor common with L. In our case, L is a prime, so that means that P cannot divide I. because phi of p and p have the same exact order. So that's the condition. And, and this means that, why did I write p? L divides I minus 1. So that means I might be 1. No, it can't be. But it might be uh, if L is five, it might be six. Uh, that fails. Uh, then it might be 11 if L is five and I is two. So that's a possibility. Damn. I had the best feeling about this idea, and I thought it would be relatively easy to, to go through with it. I think I shall have to work a little on it, and then instead of fighting it through alone here in front of the camera, I'll take a piece of paper, a sheet of paper, and do it all again and see if I've made a mistake and I'll just leave it on pause. All right, I looked at it. We have this condition as well. So let's assume that that phi p equals i p And phi squared of p and this is of course equal to p and that means i squared minus 1 p is naught. So we have L squared divides I squared minus 1. We already have that L divides Y minus 1 and it can do so only once. So we can write I minus 1 equals alpha L, where alpha is somewhere between naught and L minus 1. So we uh, substitute this with alpha L. And of course, L can't divide alpha. And this implies, of course, that L divides 2, which contradicts our L's. And did I use anywhere that it was of order 2? Yes, I used that here. But now we can immediately write up 
some of these guys. Here we have 13. And 2 to the 3rd, 2 squared, 29, 29, 337, 673. And they were all good. Now I didn't write up the types here. So we'll just do it. Oh, here, uh, This one, where it's um, a fifth order over the uh, base field, I'll just have to think that through, but the other ones I think is okay. Oops, that was unexpected. We have three here. Well, that one, this one is easy, this one is 5.5, .5, and this one is also of order 5 over it. So we have two problems. The first problem is if we instead of Squaring it has order 5 above here. Then we must have 5 to 5th order. So that means we get i to 5th. Does that make any difference? Then we get i fourth plus i to the third plus i squared plus i plus one. Uh, that's no way to think about it. it we got i to the fifth minus one. I don't know. So I would like to show that, all right, um, we have P divides, or L divides I minus 1. Can L yeah, we'll have to do it. That was one problem. The other problem was that we got a factor 3 somewhere in the type that was uh, here. That's really weird. 
I thought that would be utterly impossible. 13 to the 4th. I'll just have to look at that again. Hello there. December 23rd. I thought we'd just wrap up problem 23. Coincidence. Uh, before going to buy the last Christmas present for my wife. I realized that I missed to write the type here by um, the problem, what was it, 197? They wrote about in the problem, this must be 3.3, .3, so the type must be 2 to 5th, 2 to 4th, 3.3.5.17. I just missed that one at the time. This is the last one we need. And I worked a little on it here and I think I did solve it. Uh, no, that's exactly what I didn't solve. Because it's uh, we have an element of order 5 here, and then it's extended to 13 to the 5th power. So let's see if I can generalize it and then do it correctly this time. I do not expect to find a general answer, but to find some indications. And I'll do it using the Galois group. So let's have a generator of the Galois group. Oops. So the group generate. So we have a generator of the Galois group. Isn't it like this? You write. And of course, that means that uh, the order of phi is exactly S. And we can, uh, we may extend it in, in part uh, by, if you have a large extension, you can make a prime factorization of s and then extend piecewise. So we may assume s is a prime. And we assume we have an extension so that we have a Q in H such that the order of Q equals L to beta for beta larger than alpha. So we have Q, 2Q, and we have uh, P which equals L to beta minus alpha Q, etc. And we may have another chain here, uh, Q1, 2, Q1, etc. Then phi of Q is what? Could it line the other chain? And I got this idea maybe this morning while I was waking up. I oh, no, it was the night. I couldn't fall asleep, so I thought a little about it before dropping off to sleep. And I realized that this couldn't lie in this chain because uh, then Q of P would lie in this chain as well being this number times the, the image of Q. 
and since it's in the Galois group, it needs to operate invariantly on G, meaning on P. So that means that it's equal to some number, uh, we have an M times Q, and uh, Q cannot divide M, but actually neither can any P. Uh, there's only one P, so neither can P. All right. Now, it must fulfill two conditions. One is that phi to the s is the identity. And um, the other one is that P is mapped to itself. So first we take phi to the s of Q. That's S M Q. which should give Q. That means that SM minus 1 Q equals naught. And we do the same here. Phi of P. So it's, it's in this sequence. So it's uh, M times, I'll just write it again. M times and then it was L beta minus alpha. Uh, that's, that's complicated thinking, really. It's M times P, and that should equal P is naught. So up here we get that L to beta divides SM minus 1. And down here we know that's L to alpha. So we have the order of P is exact, that means that LA divides I. <clears throat> and no, up here it's Q, so that's beta. And L to alpha divides M minus 1. So that's two necessary conditions. There's always an M can always be found. Actually, this means that M equals I times L alpha plus one. So such a guy can easily be found. And I may range from naught to, and it shouldn't be large, this shouldn't be larger than L to beta. So that's L to beta minus alpha minus one. It doesn't really matter much because it should be cyclical anyway. But let's enter that that's M, let's enter that into here. Right. 
Of course, we already have uh, L alpha divides this part. So that means we must at least have L alpha divides this part. That's a necessary condition. There we go. Now, if we apply that to this example, we have S is 5. Q is equals Q and uh, S equals 5 and L equals 5 that is still up here and then it's of order 5 alpha is one and beta is at, is at most two well and alpha is one so can this be fulfilled for these choices no it can't we don't have uh, five divides four Therefore, in this case, it must be and one. By some ad hoc, ad hoc methods, I was able to go through it all. It appears that this last method using uh, Galois theory is the most efficient one because we have there the additional information that P is invariant under phi. All right, guys, that finishes the work on chapter two.